Hello, this is Mr. White, and in this video we are going to graphically determine the extrema of a function, that is the minima and maxima, which is plural for minimum points and maximum points. And on a related note, we are also going to find the intervals on which the graph or, or the function increases, decreases, or remains constant. I'll go ahead and say right now, as far as constant behavior goes, we're not going to experience that in this example. Um, it doesn't come up very often, and we'll go ahead and discuss it in class. Um, but after discussing increasing and decreasing, you'll probably be able to figure out constant on your own anyway. I'll also mention that this is the stuff, this uh, um, some of the stuff we do in calculus class, and of course, continue to delve into why we concern ourselves with such matters. So let's graphically find the extrema of this function. Um, I would say this is a medium level, medium to difficult level example. So if you can hang with this one, um, anything that we do out of the book will probably seem um, relatively easy by comparison. So graph that on your calculator, please. TI-84 users, remember to use the alpha F1 functionality so that you can see those uh, nice pretty uh, fractions. TI-83 users, remember you'll have to type it in like this. So pause the video and graph this on zoom standard. Zoom number six, please. Okay, you should see something like this uh, on your calculator. And uh, the first question I'm going to ask is, where do you see a local maximum point? Um, where do you see a top of a mountain, a little top of a hill or mountain? And hopefully you're zooming in on or focusing in on this point right here. That is what we call a local maximum. We use the word local because there certainly are higher points on this graph than that. There are plenty of points over here that are really higher above the x-axis than this local maximum. But locally, it is the, the top of its own little hill. And likewise, if I ask you where do you see a local minimum, Hopefully you are looking right around here. That is our local minimum, and we are going to use our calculator now to find the uh, coordinates of those local extrema. So, on your calculator, again, we should be in zoom standard. Uh, go to second, calc, and let's find the maximum first. So just type number four. And similar to some of the other calc uh, um, options you've already become familiar with, uh, you could either use the arrow keys or you could type in numbers. So for this first time, I'll, I'll use the arrow keys, and I'll say this is my left bound. This is left of the point that I'm interested in. Enter, and I'll arrow over and choose it's prompting me for the right bound. So I'll hit Enter now that I'm on the right of it. And again, after using calc zero, hopefully this feels familiar. But definitely follow along, make sure you're, you're getting this on your own. And those are the coordinates of our local maximum. So let me go back to, to this picture here, and um, we will um, drag this out here, and that's our local maximum according to the calculator. All right, let's do the same thing for minimum, just to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to um, go to calc, second calc, and then minimum, number three. And to mix it up, I'm going to type in the left and right bound this time, and I encourage you to practice both ways. So I'm looking right about here where my cursor is, and it looks to be at about two or three. It's a little hard to tell. But I'm going to say to the left of that, let's type in zero. That's a point to the left of it, and to the right, uh, let's put four or five. I'll, I'll put five here. You don't have to be super precise. And on that interval, the local minimum is there at 2.083 approximately, approximately. So again, make sure you pause, make sure you're getting that down and practice that a bit if you need to, to feel comfortable with it. And that is our local minimum. Okay, so simple enough. Uh, you may be wondering, are there some more extrema up here off the screen? Do we need to look for a local minimum or maximum at these parts of the graph where it is going really, really high or really, really low? Well, you've seen enough functions here um, that uh, tend to go up infinitely or down infinitely where hopefully you realize that's what's going on. This graph is rising infinitely high and, and plummeting infinitely low here. 
And we are not going to call those extrema. We'll just say they go infinitely high or low, but there is no single point that can qualify as a minimum or maximum there. Okay, so that's minima and maxima, uh, real briefly. Um, on a related note, let's go ahead and um, get into increasing, decreasing um, behavior. So let me go ahead and um, kind of block off part of the graph here. Um, let me do something real quickly here. Uh, yeah, obscure that. Okay, so for this part of the graph that we're looking at right now, um, as we go from left to right, and, and this is an important point, we're always talking from left to right. As we go from left to right, would you say that this graph is increasing or decreasing? Well, hopefully if you um, picture somebody uh, walking from left to right, you would agree that this is decreasing. They are going downhill. So we will say that the graph, uh, is, that the function is decreasing on this interval. And the question is, where does this interval stop? Um, we can kind of eyeball it and get a sense of what x value we're dealing with where this stops. Um, it looks to be somewhere around uh, negative 3 here, somewhere around this value. That's where our asymptote appears to be. And this is where I'd encourage you to look algebraically and, and look at the, um, at the equation and verify that that makes sense. When we look at that part of the equation, we should see, oh yeah, uh, negative 3 does not work in this uh, function algebraically, so I do know there's an asymptote there. So we are going to say that it decreases, that this little stretch of graph here, as we go from left to right, it is decreasing. And we say it decreases on the interval from negative infinity to negative 3. And notice that we are talking about x values there. This is a, um, a point that a lot of students seem to miss here. When we talk about increasing, decreasing, it's the y value that's increasing or decreasing. But when I write it on paper, I am giving intervals. This is interval notation of x value, from x being uh, around negative infinity all the way up to x um, at negative 3. So let's look at the next interval. And again, this is related to extrema because if I look at this next um, interval of the graph, I would say that um, right here, let me just again, do something real quickly here um, on the computer to reduce the clutter. Um, notice that this stretch of graph stops decreasing at the local minimum. So it's decreasing too, um, but it stops decreasing at the local minimum. So if I look at the x-coordinate of that local minimum, that 2.083, that's going to be where it stops decreasing. And we will say that this stretch of graph decreases from x equals negative 3, having a little hard time showing this clearly here, but to 2.083. Okay, so this stretch of graph decreases from negative 3 to 2.083. I'll color code it here. It's the green stretch here. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Um, this next little stretch is going uphill, right? So um, we will say that it's increasing. And we will say that this stretch of graph is increasing from 2.083 all the way up to the x-coordinate of our maximum, 4.987. So I'm going to clear these purple blocks out of the way here. Um, and we'll say that that stretch increases. I know the screen's getting cluttered, but I hope, you're, um, hope you feel like you're, you're following along here. Uh, that's the increasing interval. And again, I'm only giving my x values when I get, give these intervals. It's very, it is a confusing aspect of the um, interval notation because notice that when we're talking about a specific point, like this local maximum, that is an, those are coordinates. When you talk about a point, that's x, that's y. But again, when we're talking about intervals of increasing and decreasing, we are using interval notation, and both of those are x values. I'm emphasizing that a lot because I've seen a lot of students get confused over that. So our last interval um, where the graph goes back downhill and decreases. Um, 
we would say it decreases from the x value 4.987 all the way to infinity. So I hope that made sense. Again, if you uh, feel like you, you got this one, then um, I think you'll find that uh, whatever assignment I give you will be relatively doable or easy by comparison. I'll ask you one extra thing. Um, notice that we had an, uh, an asymptote at x equals negative 3 due to this part of the equation. I'll ask you to real quickly consider why don't we have any asymptotes due to that part of the equation. Just as a little hint, I'll point out that that part of the equation could be rewritten as x minus 5 squared plus 1. So I'll ask you to consider why can that never be equal to 0 and therefore not produce any asymptotes. Hopefully you get a nice algebraic understanding of why we only have the one asymptote. So if I could uh, just uh, organize all this clutter into something a little bit more, more neat, um, what I would expect to see as your answer. Um, is something I'll put it down in the lower right hand corner here. Um, I'd expect to see the, the intervals of increasing and decreasing behavior look something like that. Um, if I'm asking for the extrema, I'd want to see the local minimum and the local maximum um, listed like that as well. All right, so let's have you try one on your own here. Here's one. Uh, um, again, about the same level of difficulty as the example I just did. So pause the video, find the extrema, and the increasing, decreasing uh, intervals. And again, constant, we'll cover that at another time. Um, just as a quick check, when you've typed that into your calculator, it should look something like this. And if it does, again, proceed to find the extrema and the increasing, decreasing behavior. So I'm going to go back to the previous slide here. And go ahead and pause right now because in just a moment I'm going to reveal the solutions. All right, so the extrema on this graph should be as listed. And again, I emphasize those are x, y coordinates. So x equals negative 1.003 for our first local minimum. y equals negative 4.960 for our, for our um, local minimum. And for increasing, decreasing intervals, these are all intervals of x. No y values at all there. So hopefully that's what you got.